Welcome to Parenting Decoded, a podcast for practical approaches to parenting. I'm Mary Eschen. Before I get started, I want to thank all of my regular listeners for being supportive of my most recent podcast posts of my one-hour seminars that in pre-pandemic days I'd do for live audiences. I wanted to take advantage of the pandemic allowing me to record them on Zoom, something that would have been really hard to do before. Now, all of them are not only available as podcasts, but also can be watched on my YouTube channel called, not surprisingly, Parenting Decoded. From here on, I'll be coming to you with new content with tips and tricks on how to improve your parenting journey. Here goes. Do you have kids who are always running to the car saying, I'm first? Or maybe they argue over who mom or dad reads to first at night. Or how about who gets to sit where at the dinner table? Or maybe, who does dad pour the ketchup on french fries first? I know my boys would have a battle each time we got into an elevator over who gets to push the buttons. It's exhausting, isn't it? You might even say it drains your energy if you're a love and logic parent. In this podcast, I want to help you turn that constant bickering into an opportunity for modeling cooperation and fairness. Ha! There's no way that can happen in your house, you say. I challenge you to try a few of these tactics and get back to me and let me know if they worked for you and your family. I'll bet you one free hour of coaching if I'm not right. Otherwise, you leave me a nice review on this podcast. Deal? Deal. First, determine a list of issues your kids are competing at. Some of you can probably do this off the top of your head. The issues are so obvious. But if you need to, observe them for a few days and take notes till you have at least three or four things to talk about. Here's a list from one parent who sent me it. Who showers first? Who brushes their teeth first? Who sits on the couch first? And where do they sit? Next, hold a family meeting at a time when no competitions are going on. Maybe after dinner or just ask everyone to come into the family room for a few minutes. There's an entire podcast, number 17, on how to run family meetings. But here's a brief review. Step one, set the meeting, meaning the location and duration. The meeting will be really short for young ones, four and under, three to five minutes. But for older kids, it could be 15 or 20 minutes. Don't make it too long. In this case, I'll choose Sunday evening right after dinner. Step two, start the meeting, list the issues. Have your list of competition challenges ready and ask for input of any others you might have missed. For this Sunday's meeting, let's say we just work on one issue, which seats the family sit in at the dinner table. I have to chuckle, this sounds so simple, right? But I know there are plenty of petty issues like this that your kids fight about, right? Step three, brainstorm. Take one example at a time and think about new ways to solve the problem. In our example of where to sit at the dinner table, have everyone come up with several ways to solve it. It could be a rotation every night, or you could choose seats for a week at a time. You can talk about how to figure out who gets to choose first, rock, paper, scissors, or pulling numbers from a hat. All options. You could even throw in some silly ones like have a no chair night where you all have a picnic on the floor once a week. Be creative. It's way more fun and engaging. Step four, select ideas. Once you've brainstormed lots of ideas, go through a process to select which ones you're going to try first. Be sure to keep the list of full ideas since this is the start of the process of selecting just the first one to try. In this step, also make sure to decide how long the first trial will last, a day, a week, a month. I'm guessing that most families will probably try something for about a week when they first attempt to do this. In our example, let's say we choose seats for one week at a time and choose by using numbers from a hat. Step five, experiment. Now comes the fun part. Whatever method was chosen, try it out for the agreed upon duration. In our case, the four of us pull numbers from a hat and we choose a seat for one whole week. As the week progresses, take notes on what people, different people think. If your kids are able, have them make a poster to put in the kitchen with each person's name on it and maybe a box under it with the person's, each person's current mood. 
positive, negative, or neutral. Feel free to use stickers or magnets so that people can change their minds throughout the week. Step six, review and revise. At this point, we're going to schedule a follow-up family meeting where you formally review how your experiment worked. If the feedback is great, great. If it's not, then you go back to the lists you came up with the first time and see what other options you could try. You can even take in new feedback. That's fine. As you can tell, the important theme here is that it's an experiment not set in stone. We often try something once, and when it doesn't work out, we give up. We want to model for our kids that life is all about evolving experiments that should eventually lead to acceptable solutions all around, but it takes work. You should model that the work is worth it. In our chair example, let's say Joe is happy, but Michael isn't. Mom and dad are fine anywhere, so they are neutral. If someone isn't happy, we're going to look at the list. What can we modify about how we pick for next week that can make Michael happy next week and to get Joe to at least be neutral? Since Joe drew the best number from a hat last week, we decide that Michael will go first this week without choosing from a hat at all. We also decided that since Dad is responsible for getting refills, that he'll have a permanent seat that is closest to the counter, so now we rotate through just three seats. I think you get the drift. We'll try this new setup for another week and then meet up again for more feedback and review. Step seven, celebrate. When you're able to make headway on issues, celebrate. Often in our busy lives, we make progress and just keep bulldozing right on past a success. Take time. Make it fun. You don't have to do it every time, but sometimes it really is great for building a family culture that is productive, caring, and enjoyable to be in. An ice cream party or a trip to a fun place that everyone loves, do something to show it was worth it. Just to give you a flavor for the process, I'm going to tell you about one brave family with two little girls who are four and two. The older one is the really competitive one and wants to do everything first, but her little sister at two isn't going to let her big sister push her around. Sound familiar? Dad is usually on duty in the mornings, and those girls immediately start competing for dad's attention. Who gets their hair done first? Who sits at the table first? Who gets milk on their cereal first? You get the idea. The same sorts of things happen at bedtime with brushing teeth, taking a bath, reading books, you name it. Well, dad sat them down one morning for a three-minute family meeting, because they're young, to brainstorm what they could do. He proposed that one girl could go first in the morning and the other in the evening. Would that work for them? They then proceeded to pick which girl was the morning girl and which one was the evening girl. Excellent. That morning went so smooth. The older daughter was first, so she was really happy and the younger one was fine with it. Then came the evening and the older daughter wanted to be first at something. It only took a little bit of calm and loving reminding from dad as to what the agreement was, and she was okay. Yay, progress! This worked well for morning and evening for maybe a week or more. However, they started competing so much for the non-morning, non-evening issues that both mom and dad were at their wits' end when they met with me and felt like failures. Oh my, that was not our intention, but remember, it's an experiment. After some encouragement, they decided to hold that next family meeting to expand the morning and evening choices to encompass an experiment where each girl would be first all day for everything, and then they'd rotate the next day for the other girl to be first. They were going to print out a calendar that the girls could color their own days so that they would always know who was first or second. How did round two go? Really well. Round one seemed hopeful but they needed, they really needed round two in ways that they couldn't have predicted without the round one experiment. This family recently had a round three to figure out that they need to cross off the days on the calendar when they are done so that their younger daughter could visually see which day was which a little bit better. Yay! 
I hope and pray some of these ideas will help you tone down the competition level in your home. Have been kids that go first or second or whatever it takes. It does take extra time and effort to set things up, but sometimes that's the extra effort that can make all the difference. That's all for now. If you could do me a favor and write a quick review of the podcast, that would be really amazing. My goal is to help families, and you can really help me do that by taking a minute to write a review. Lastly, I would love to hear from any of you who are willing to accept my challenge of trying some of these ideas out. If they don't work, a free hour of coaching for you. If they do, a review from you on my podcast. Seems like it's a win-win if you ask me. Send me your email with your results to mary at parentingdecoded.com. Take care and be safe. Have a blessed rest of your day.